many shouts listed in Scripture? Today we're going to look at seven of them. When you read Scripture, you recognize that people shouted to God for joy. They shouted in triumph. They shouted in praise. Sometimes they shouted for help. Other times they shouted for freedom. But it's really not the why. There are some people in this sanctuary today that you probably feel like shouting to God for help. You've got a situation that's overwhelming you. It's a problem that you in your own strength cannot solve. And you just feel like shouting, help me, Lord. That's okay. People might hear that kind of shout and they say, well, he's just frustrated. She's just desperate. They just are emotional. You need to know that emotions don't make you any less holy. They just make you all the more human. If you're frustrated, if you're desperate, it doesn't make you any less saved. It just means you need a savior. So you do what Peter said. Cast all of your cares upon him because he cares for you. And oftentimes when it comes time to cast those cares on the Lord, it's the shout of help that does so. Because as long as you're holding on to it, he can't help you with it. Peter knew something about shouting for help. Peter was the guy that in one moment had the courage to get out of the boat and walk on the water. And in the next moment, he was drowning in what he was once walking over. Most of the time, that's when we need help. When what we thought we had on our own is now killing us. And the Bible records one of the shortest and most powerful prayers that you've ever heard. And it goes like this, Lord, save me. There was not even a thank you, please, or an amen. <laughs> Had Peter decided that he was going to wax eloquent in the king's language, he would have died. Yea, verily, Father, I say... <laughs> What'd you say, Pete? There's nothing wrong with shouting to God for help. Other people shout for joy. A shout of joy is a moment whenever you just see all of the good things that God is doing in your life and you know all of the things that he's done in your past and you're looking forward to what he's going to be doing in your future and all of these things start to flood your spirit at once and you just feel like you've got to let something out and if you don't let it out, you might pop. That's a shout of joy. The thing about a shout of joy is that sometimes when you shout for joy, it irritates people. That's fine. Let it irritate them and remember that they haven't been through what you've been through. They didn't walk through the valley that you just came out of. They've never faced the needs that you have in your life. They've never sat in the doctor's office and listened to the diagnosis that pronounced your death only to go back to that same doctor's office and listen to the diagnosis that said you were going to live. They've never seen the battles and they've never fought the fights. They've never carried the burdens and they've never felt that yoke broken. So whenever you shout for joy, don't you worry about who it irritates just focus on who it gives glory to because he is the one who has made a way where there seems to be no way the first shout that we discuss today is a shout that you cannot shout for yourself it's a shout of restoration Today we look at seven shouts and the first thing that we need to see about Jericho is that Jericho was a proclamation of restoration. Forty years in the wilderness, the children of Israel have been wandering. Now they're in the promised land and God says, walk around the walls of the city and when you hear the horn, the English language does not give us a good enough translation. You have to get into the Hebrew to recognize that this is no ordinary horn. The children of Israel heard shofars all the time. They heard shofars telling them it was time to come to temple. This was not that horn. They heard shofars calling them to battle. This was not that horn. This was the horn that was only blown on the occasion of Jubilee. And Jubilee came once every 50 years. In the 50th year in Israel, God gave Moses instructions, and we read them in Leviticus 25 and 9. Concerning the law of Jubilee, 
He said, then you shall cause the trumpet, the jubal. That's the same word that he spoke to Joshua. Then the priest shall blow the horn, the jubal. And sound the sound of jubilee throughout all of your land. And proclaim liberty. Say that with me. And proclaim liberty to all of the inhabitants. And it shall be a jubilee for you, and each of you shall return to his possessions. So here's how jubilee worked every 50 years in Israel. Every 50 years when the jubilee trumpet would sound, it meant that for the next 12 months, all of the debts, all of the issues that were owed against you over the last 49 years were instantly canceled. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. American Express, Visa, MasterCard, and Discover sent you a notice in the mail and said, it's all gone. Yeah, now you're getting the Jubilee spirit in you, aren't you? Talk about Jesus setting you free. You're like, yes, hallelujah. Talk about MasterCard. You're like, oh, Jesus. What happened at Jericho was a shout, but it was not just any shout. It was a restoration shout. It was a shout that God had ordained to take what the enemy had stolen from his children and bring it back to his people. Now, you and I cannot shout this shout for ourselves because we are not children of Israel. We have not been given the covenant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Bible tells us in the New Testament, Paul speaking, that we were outside of the covenants, outside of the promises of God, and without hope. But then Jesus Christ, our hope, the Son of God, and the Son of David, he grafted us into this covenant He did not replace what God gave to Abraham. He pulled us into it. And everything that was given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was extended through the blood of Jesus Christ to you and to me. So let's talk about the shout for help. Because the Bible says that our God is a very present help in times of trouble. We read about a shout for help in 2 Chronicles 14 and 11 from King Asa. The Bible there says that Asa cried out to the Lord his God. And he said, Lord, it is nothing for you to help, whether with many or with those who have no power. And then Asa said, Lord, help us. Say that with me. Lord, help us. Some of you say, well, that's pretty straight talk. That's the kind of talk God appreciates. I don't care how good you are in any language. God likes sincerity. In the Bible, we find a shout for help. It's a moment when you are crying dependence, not independence. When you say, God, I need you. We live in a world that prides itself on being independent. We live in a world that we think the more we can do for ourselves and by ourselves, the better off we are. And you may get to a place in your business where you can be independent. You may get to a place in your life where you're comfortable with that. But here's what Jesus said. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I don't care how independent you think you are in this life. You will never come to a point where you are independent of the need of God Almighty. You need him. And the good news is, he wants you. God doesn't need us, God wants us. You need him. People say, for what? Breath. (laughs) In him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. I assure you, whenever you stop breathing, everything in your life will change. Your priorities are just going to get flipped right upside down. Right now, you probably got lunch pretty high on the list. You stop breathing, you might not be hungry anymore. 
I know it's deep, but it's just food for thought. You need him. You need him to forgive you of sins and transgressions. You need him to go back into your, rest, your yesterdays and with his crimson blood blot out all of the things that were against him. You need him to give you the opportunity to receive strength today and hope for tomorrow. Don't ever let pride keep you from shouting to God for help. Are you outnumbered? Shout to God. He's on your side. Are you out of strength? Shout to God. He gives strength to the weak and weary. Do you feel abandoned and alone? Shout to God because he is your help in time of trouble and he'll never leave you nor forsake you. We read about a shout for joy in many places, but today I've chosen Psalms 100 verses 1 through 5. David says, make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. A shout for joy is different than a shout of praise or a shout of triumph because a shout for joy is something that is not based on circumstances. Circumstances change, and when your mood is based on circumstances, when the, mood, when the circumstance changes, your mood changes. But joy is not a byproduct of circumstance. Joy comes from what you possess. The Bible says that in his presence is the fullness of joy. If you possess God's presence and you remember what David said, that we are the sheep of his pasture, then it doesn't matter what season you're walking through, you have a source from which you can shout for joy. In a season of need, you remember the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He shall provide my every need. In a season of trouble, you remember that because he watches over me, he walks through the valley of the shadow of death with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. And he says, said, if I call upon him, his name would be a strong tower that I could run into. In a season of worry, you shout for joy because you remember the Lord is my light and he is my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? Child of God, not everything in your world has to be perfect before you decide to give God a shout of joy because he is still on the throne. He is still great and greatly to be praised. And magnify his name and let us exalt him together for you are a holy people to the Lord your God a special treasure above all peoples on the face of the earth God chose Israel as a light unto all nations so that through them the world might come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ will you help John Hagee Ministries in praying for Israel for Jerusalem's sake we will not remain silent for your gift in support of Israel Hagee Ministries would like to send you a Jerusalem keychain, the Living Word from Israel message, and the Healing and Living Word devotion. For your generous gift of $200 or more, you will also receive our Pray for the Peace of Jerusalem dove and a prayer shawl made in Jerusalem. Our God is faithful, and He has promised to bless those who bless the nation of Israel. Send your gift today. Call the number on your screen or visit jhm.org slash chosen. After a shout of joy comes a shout of praise. And praise is what you shout whenever you see God's hand begin to move. In Ezra, the third chapter, the 11th verse, the Bible says, And the people shouted with a great shout when they praised the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. The story is very simple. Ezra was one of the priests who came back from Babylon to Jerusalem. When those who had been in Babylon for so many years came back to Jerusalem, the house of God was destroyed. It was essential for them to be able to worship God in that place. And Ezra encouraged the people. He let them know God was going to make that house better than any house they'd ever seen before. And the thing that the people did was they said, how are we going to get the funding for that? We have no money. We ourselves don't have bricks for our houses. How are we going to get the permit for that? The government doesn't want us here. They're not going to let us build here. How are we going to do the work whenever we don't have any skilled craftsmen? 
Let me tell you something. When you come against a problem and you start counting all of the reasons you're going to fail, you probably are going to fail. And if by some chance you succeed, you will not enjoy success because of all the stress and strife you allowed into the equation. But Ezra tells them God's going to do it. And when the children of Israel see God lay the foundation after he's done one miracle after another, they begin to praise and shout as they consider the great things that God has done. In our life, I want to encourage you to give God a shout of praise in spite of how impossible the situation seems to be. Whenever you see impossible, remember that impossible is what God does best. I wonder how many times does God have to move before we're willing to give him the shout of praise that he's worthy of? How many displays of power does he have to perform before we recognize the greatness of our God? How many Red Seas have to part? How many Jerichos have to fall? How much fire has to come from heaven? How many furnaces does he have to show up in? How many resurrection mornings do there have to be before we recognize that our God is great and he is greatly to be praised? Praised. In the Bible, there is a shout for freedom. Psalm 146 in verse 7, it says, The Lord gives freedom to prisoners. Say that with me. The Lord gives freedom to prisoners. In Psalms 146, there are 10 verses that talk about why those who get help from the Lord should rejoice. And in verse 7, it says, because the Lord gives freedom. Now, freedom is something that we value in our Western way of life here in America. But I would challenge you with this thought today. You're not as free as you think you are. I'm free. I'm free to do what I want. Fine. Drive home just like you want. Go ahead. You're free. Highway's crowded. Just get on the grass. (laughs) Cop shows up with his red and blues flashing behind you. Just say, hello, officer, I'm free. (laughs) You'll find out you're free to remain silent. You're free to an attorney. You've got a free phone call. But you're not as free as you want to be. In the world we live in, there are a number of things that prohibit our freedom. And Jesus said it this way, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. There is no meaningful freedom in this life outside of Jesus Christ. And the common barrier to freedom in all of our lives is sin. People say, why do we have all of these laws? Sin. They don't make laws because we treat each other well. They make laws because whether they know it or not, they're trying to prohibit sin. There's a shout of triumph. Psalms 47 and verse 1. We read the words of King Hezekiah. They're familiar, but you might not understand the story behind them. The shout of triumph comes on a day when Hezekiah sees God's hand do something so great he doesn't know how to describe it. Psalms 47 and 1 tells us, Oh, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Here's the story. Hezekiah is the king in Jerusalem, and Jerusalem has been surrounded by Sennacherib. Sennacherib is the king of Assyria, and at this point in history, the most powerful of all kings on the earth. Sennacherib has 180,000 men fighting in his army because every nation he conquered, he just took over their men and said, you now fight for me. So by the time they march to Jerusalem, there are 180,000 soldiers around the walls of the city. There is no way of escape. Sennacherib tells Hezekiah, we're coming for your town. 
And he begins a siege. All of the resources, all of the food is gone. Sennacherib writes letters mocking Hezekiah. He says, listen, I'm bored. I've been out here for a long time. Why don't you just put like 300 men on horses? We'll give you the horses. We'll give you the shields. We'll give you the arrows. We'll just go kill those guys and say we're done with it. How about we get this over with? That's just how Sennacherib looked at Hezekiah. He's nothing but a piece of dirt to be discarded on my way to conquest. And you need to know your enemy does not respect you either. There's nothing you can do that's going to make him worry about you. So Hezekiah, he takes the letter that Sennacherib writes and he reads that in this letter, Sennacherib says, on this day and at this time, regardless of what you do or say, we're coming over the wall and this is going to be over. And Sennacherib gives Hezekiah his fate, and Hezekiah lays that fate out before the Lord, and he lays down on the floor in the house of God, and he cries out all night, God, spare us. God, make a way. God, do something great. He was shouting for help. The next morning, as the sun begins to show up on the eastern horizon, Hezekiah walks up the stairs to the walls of Jerusalem and he peers over the wall so that he can see how many soldiers are coming and what terrible things are going to happen in the streets of Jerusalem that day. But rather than see an enemy advancing, what Hezekiah saw is what the angel of the Lord did in the night while he prayed. You see, the angel of the Lord, while Hezekiah was in God's house shouting for help, was walking tent to tent and campfire to campfire. And rather than see 180,000 men armed to the teeth, ready to destroy the city of God, what Hezekiah saw was 180,000 corpses as they were laid out by the angel of God that marched through the camp of the enemy that night while Hezekiah prayed. And what Hezekiah recognizes is that there is no more threat, there is no more battle, there is no more sword he's got absolute triumph all of his enemies have been defeated he doesn't know how to turn around and tell the people in Jerusalem what God has done he doesn't know how to describe 180,000 soldiers that are no longer going to destroy them he doesn't know how to tell them in just a few words what God has done so suddenly so the only thing that he can think to say is clap your hands all ye people and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. I say this in closing, remain standing. The seventh shout is the shout of the king. In Numbers we read the words of Balaam. He says, the shout of the king is among them. What he was doing was he was telling an enemy of Israel, it really doesn't matter what you want to do to them, the shout of the king is among them. And because the king is among them, you can't do anything to them. Now at Jericho that day, there were two million people. And all of them had their own individual needs. They all had things that they wanted God to do. Some of them may have been there to shout for help and others for joy and others for praise and others for freedom and others for restoration. But the point is, every one of them was a child of the king. And in order for them to reach their destiny, Jericho had to fall. Joshua couldn't get to his home, nor could the last out of Egypt get to theirs. Unless the walls came down. So they needed a shout that would unify them. Because the Bible says that the Lord commands a blessing where there is unity. And so they shouted the shout of the king. Because being kings 
kids. It was the one shout that they could do together. We've learned the lessons in the laps. But there comes a time to shout. Child of God, I don't know what shout you've got in your lungs today. I don't know if you're in this sanctuary shouting to God for help. I don't know if you're shouting for joy because of what he's done or praise for what he's going to do or triumph because of the mountains he's moved or freedom because of the bondages you want broken. But right where you are, I just want you to lift your voice and begin to praise the Lord knowing that God hears the praises of his people. I want you to invite his presence to come into this place as you begin to receive in faith believing that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you could ask, all that you could think, and all that you could imagine. And I want the spirit of the King of kings and the Lord of lords to come into this place. And I want you to shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Lift your voice and declare a season of restoration. Lift your voice and declare a time of victory. Lift your voice and let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Child of God, the time has come to shout these walls down. Give the Lord a praise. Give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you for being a part of our program. Join us as we stand united in support of Israel. The Bible says, for Zion's sake, we will not keep silent. Israel, you are not alone. We love you and stand with you now and forever. Our government may be turning a blind eye, but the Christians of America are praying for you every day. We want to thank you, our friends and partners, as you bless the state of Israel and the Jewish people. Becoming a legacy partner with Hagee Ministries allows you to make a difference in the lives of millions of people all over the world. Technology is allowing us to connect with so many people through the use of online platforms and social media. You can now watch live services and on-demand content from Hagee Ministries at jhm.org. Become a part of a lasting legacy. Call the number on the screen or go to jhm.org slash partner. Get ready, ladies. It's time for the 2021 Embrace Women's Conference, hosted by Kendall and Diana Hagee. We invite you to experience an exciting night, powerful worship, and inspiring messages with special guest, best-selling author, Nona Jones, pastor of The Belonging Co., Alex Seeley, and worship leader, Rita Springer. Join us Friday, September 10th and 11th at Cornerstone Church. For more information on our VIP or virtual experience, visit embracewomen.com. You've been watching Hagee Ministries. If you need prayer, call our prayer line or visit our website. Looking for more content to help you in your daily walk? Listen to our podcast or subscribe to Hagee Ministries on YouTube. Be blessed and join us tomorrow.